Hello. Welcome to the next talk in the series of midweek talks from the parish of St. Joseph and Swithins in Bromley. Today I'd like to spend a little time exploring next Sunday's Gospel, which is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42, in which Jesus asks the question, what are you looking for? But before I do, I'd like to start with a story. A man decides he would like to settle down and get married, and so starts looking for his perfect wife. He wants to find someone who is beautiful, kind, loving, and very religious. He found such a woman, but it did not work out. He told a friend that she was so religious that she could not relate to practical things in life. So he continued his search and met someone else. She was beautiful, kind, and loving and intelligent, organised and practical, and he thought she would make the perfect wife. But, once again, it did not work out. She was so practical, she really didn't need anyone in her life, and ended up being domineering. So, he continued his search. He then met another woman. She was beautiful, kind, loving, intelligent and practical, as well as being religious. At last he thought, she will make a perfect wife, with a beautiful balance of practical and spirituality. But sadly, once again it didn't work out. You see, she was looking for the perfect husband. In Sunday's Gospel, John the Baptist points out Jesus to two of his disciples with the words, Behold the Lamb of God. Immediately they began to follow him. When Jesus saw them, he asked them, what are you looking for? This is not a simple question it initially seems. It is profound and challenging. It invites us to look deeply into ourselves and evaluate the direction and meaning of our lives. The two disciples did not fully understand the question because they answer with another question. Rabbi, where are you staying? A rabbi during the time of Jesus was unlike the rabbi of today because they were itinerant preachers, much like the prophets. They moved from place to place, teaching about scriptures together with lessons from the concrete realities of life. A rabbi's disciples often followed them wherever he goes and imbibed his philosophy and way of life in the process. So. To ask a rabbi where he lives is immaterial. What really matters is being with him wherever he goes. That is why instead of answering their question, Jesus replies with an invitation, come and you will see. It is an invitation not to a place, but to a relationship, to be part of his life. So they went with him and they stayed with him that day. The one day's experience inspires them so much that it radically transforms them. From being followers to evangelizers. One of them, Andrew, looks for his brother Simon and eagerly breaks the good news to him. We have found the Messiah. Every day the Lord invites us, come, follow me. And like the two disciples, many of us would readily follow him, but he will invariably pose the same question to us. What are you looking for? This is the important question that we need to ask ourselves before we decide to follow Jesus. People follow Jesus for various reasons, depending on their ideas about him. Many see him as a great healer, and so they follow him in order to be healed of their various ailments. Others acknowledge him as one who teaches with authority. They follow him because they like to listen to his teachings. Yet others admire him as a miracle worker and they want to witness his miracles. And sadly, some, like the Pharisees, consider him an enemy and a threat to their authority and status. So they follow him and try and catch him and have something to accuse him of. On Sunday, Jesus will ask us, what are we looking for? Just like he will ask the young people who are starting their confirmation preparation. He wants to know why we are following him. 
This is a crucial question that has to be answered honestly in order to purify our motivations and intensify our commitment to follow him. Peter accordingly responded, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. We too need to be clear about our motivations. We follow Jesus because we will profess our firm belief in him as our Lord and God. We humbly acknowledge that without him we are nothing and we can do nothing. He is the reason for our being and existence. In him alone can we, can we find fullness of life, happiness and salvation. By knowing this we are strengthened and encouraged to face whatever challenges and trials life may give us. As we look around us, it is easy to see so many lost and wandering souls who go through life looking for meaning and happiness. Like John the Baptist, we have a duty to tell them about Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. And like Andrew, we must bring them to Jesus so that they too may find the true meaning of life. I will be the first to admit this is not an easy task. We all know that the world is in the middle of a crisis, but this is not a reason to fear and do nothing. Instead, this is an opportunity for us to strengthen more than ever our faith in the abiding presence of Jesus Christ. As Pope Benedict told the young people who gathered in Madrid in August 2011, Dear friends, may not adversity paralyse you. Be afraid neither of the world nor of the future nor of your weaknesses. The Lord has allowed you to live in this moment of history so that, by your faith, his name will continue to resound throughout the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.